Before the video starts, I just want to let you guys know that this video was originally recorded back in the middle of August. I actually thought I had lost this file, but I found it recently, so I'm deciding to upload it now. But uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Hello gorgeous people, what is going on and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going over a lesser known analog horror series called Woodlands National Park. In this series, we explore a national park that is completely taken over by different monsters and entities and creatures, and they basically pose a huge threat to the public. But for some reason, the national park keeps trying to get people to come in. This analog horror series is also a little different because we get to see an actual camera perspective instead of mostly just like flashing images. But you guys will see what I mean when we get into it. This series is by the channel Buddy Films. Please be sure to go support their channel. The link will be in the description down below. But all right guys, enough of me talking, let's hop right in. Video one, the most dangerous national park. Woodlands National Park, EST 1912. Hello everyone, I'm Park Ranger Steve. And I'm Park Ranger Alex. And Hello. welcome to Woodlands National Park, located in the beautiful state of in the beautiful state of where? Park brochure, located in the beautiful state of... Too blurry to read, but it's in the US. Park information. Woodlands National Park was designated as a national monument in 1912 and made an official national park in 1939. The park contains many animus, creatures, plants, and entities. And today we're gonna to be talking about informational videos that are only available at our visitor centers. These videos will include stuff about the park, locations, and crazy animals that will give you nightmares. Ooh. He's standing right there. These videos can be located at our visitor centers at the designated viewing stations. All you have to do if you want to learn about a subject is press the designated button and these videos will play. These videos cover topics such as walkers, weather, trail locations, visitors locations, national park history, and more. Thank you everyone for watching. We hope you found this video informational and we hope you also find further videos informational. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to a park ranger and they will help you the best they can. We hope you enjoy your stay and have a great time at Woodlands, Woodlands National, national park. park. Okay, so that was... That was pretty short, but that was just the first video. It's a little introduction to the series. It concerns me how easily they talk about that there's creatures that will give you nightmares in the park. Why would you ever want to go there? <laughs> Unless they're meaning it with like a joking tone, but it definitely, based on what we saw, it doesn't seem like it's a joke. Uh, we get to see one creature for a second. Let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, we get to see this. This kind of looks like part of a skull and we hear some growling. And then there's a section where it says he's standing right there. I guess you could kind of see something over here, but it's very hard to see. But it seems our two main characters at the moment are park rangers, Steve and Alex. Yeah, that was just the intro. So not much to say about that one. I don't know what state that was in. It seems like the state is very blurry when it says it on purpose. Let's just keep it going. Let's jump into the next one. Video two, the existence of Wendigos. All right. Hi everyone, I'm Steve with Woodlands National Park, and today I'm gonna to be talking about Wendigos. Now what is a Wendigo? Well, a Wendigo is actually a Native American legend, which until recently we thought it was a legend, due to some mishaps at the park. There is no legs here. You can see the drag marks about here. We now have a knowledge that Wendigos are real. Now, with this being said, if you need more information about the Wendigo, please feel free to pick up a pamphlet at one of our many visitor centers around the park. Now, what should you do if you encounter one on, many, on one of our many prestigious trails? Well, the first thing you should do is never run. They love it when you run. Do they now? So, you can't run. So what should you do? Well, the reason we say don't run is because actually a Wendigo can run up to 45 miles per hour. And this is... Oh, please stop cutting off. I need to know all the information about this thing. Oh, the park brochure again. 
Wendigos. First discovered by the Native Americans in the northern regions of the United States, the Wendigo is a flesh-eating monster, has been observed running up to 45 miles per hour. To successfully kill a Wendigo, the heart must be removed. The best course of action is to slowly back away. Make sure you watch your footing so you don't step on any loose debris. Once you've reached a safe distance, please speed up and reach one of your local visitor centers or one of your local officers. From then, please let them know the location and time of your sighting so we can close the area off and prevent any virtual casualties. Hey, hey, John, John, what is that? John, we gotta go. John, we gotta go. John, we gotta go. John, we gotta go. It's actually kind of funny because Park Ranger Steve here stutters a few times and it almost seems like he's in fear while making this video. And I mean, completely understandable if there's Wendigos that could run at 45 miles per hour and they're just eating people around the forest. I would definitely be a little scared too. Again, why is this place still open? If that's something that's just walking around, I have no idea. Definitely something to be concerned about. I would not be going here. It's also interesting that to kill them, the heart must be removed. How you're ever going to get in a situation with one of these things where you're going to be able to remove its heart, like you're probably going to have to pin it down, like have like three people pin this thing down and then another person come in and take the heart out. How they're going to do that. Good luck. I also think it's kind of funny that he's like, when you see one back away slowly until you're far enough away and then run. But he kind of just immediately runs and John over here, who's the third person, uh, kind of just gets screwed over and killed, it seems. So RIP my boy John, he got eaten by the Wendigo. But uh, let's jump into the next one because I know this definitely gets a little crazier as time goes on. It's not just Wendigos in this place. Video 3. 45 foot tall cryptid. I'm Park Ranger Alex here at Woodlands National Park. Hi, Alex. And before we get started with today's PSA, here are some announcements for the park this upcoming week. Dead Man's Trail is closed until further notice. We ask that all park members please respect the privacy of... Dead Man's Trail? Given what I know about this place already, I'm pretty sure I know why it's named that and why it's closed. We ask that all park members please respect the privacy of the victim. Oh, so that was probably John that got killed in the last video. The visitor center on the south side is also now open. Please stop by as we have many activities for the family and the children. Today's BSA is in regards to the increased reports of walker activity throughout the park. And we as a park staff walker. wish to inform the public about what walkers are and how to be safe against them. Please. Walkers are, by all accounts, unique to the park in that they are never found anywhere else in the world. Walkers, until recently, were believed to be completely invisible and possibly spectral. But, due to thermal technology, we have been able to visualize walkers and now are able to report on how they actually look. Walkers are, for all intents and purposes, completely invisible to the naked eye, as their skin is such a dark black color, it absorbs all spectrums of visible light. Can I see one somehow? Oh, is that what they meant by it standing right there? They can huh. only be seen via thermal technology. And with this, we've been able to conclude they are anywhere between 12 to 45 feet tall with long legs and short torsos. 45 feet. Park brochure again. We could always rely on the park brochure for information. They did say that. Walkers. 
Walkers are mysterious creatures that are completely invisible to the naked eye at night due to their incredibly dark skin that absorbs all visible light. We currently have no explanation for where they come from. They are estimated to be anywhere from 12 to 45 feet in height. Walkers are capable of producing high levels- Ah! Walkers are capable of producing high levels of radio waves from their bodies. This will cause any radio in the imminent area to produce static. This is theorized to be some sort of language to the walkers, but efforts to decipher the signals have been unsuccessful. Alright, so let me make some notes here. Just to put this into context for you, think of someone that you know that's six foot tall. Now think of them double their height. That is the smallest that one of these things can be. And again, they're invisible to the naked eye. It doesn't really say if they are a threat. I'm guessing that they definitely can be, or they either eat humans or something. They said that you could see them through thermal. I'd love to see a thermal view of one of these things just to see how it actually looks and how big it is in scale. Because a 45 foot one? Dude, that's ridiculous. <laughs> That's huge. I don't think that the park rangers are entirely normal. Like, I don't think they're just normal people just saying what's going on here. Maybe they're being forced to work here or something. There's just something about their vibe that's a little off. But let's continue. While the walkers are incredibly dangerous creatures, there are measures you can take to ensure your safety and still have an enjoyable time here at Woodlands National Park. Okay. Firstly, we urge you not to leave the designated camping area. The designated camping area is walled off, well lit, and well protected against all outside threats at the park. And we urge you not to leave, as it is your safest place to be. Secondly, we urge you not to let your campfire die out, even late at night. Keeping your campfire stocked is your last line of defense against any threats that may want to hurt you. Thirdly, if you have any FM radio or AM radio or any kind of walkie-talkie, we urge you that if you hear static late at night, please respond with the words, Ranger, Ranger. If you don't, do not hear a designated Ranger with a badge number respond to you, please ignore as it is a walker. We do not understand how exactly this is possible, but we can confirm it is indeed a walker. So does that mean that they can imitate human voices? Because he said, we don't know how this is possible, but it will definitely be a walker if they don't respond with a Ranger number. They also said that the camp area is the only safe area and that it's like walled off and protected, but it still seems like walkers can get in there if you're worried about your fire going out. You got a fire here and... There's the static. That concludes today's PSA. If you have any questions, feel free to ask a ranger or pick up a brochure in the visitor center. That's all for today, folks. Happy camping here at Woodlands National Park. Thank you, Alex. Okay, so it seems like each video so far, we're learning about like new creatures and things like that. And again, like I said, totally into this idea. I'm very, very interested to see where this goes. But all right, this next one seems like it's gonna be a little bit crazy. Video four, the private military group. Oh, we didn't even get to finish the intro there. The Dyer Corporation bringing you a better tomorrow. Gamma level clearance required. This program is considered highly classified. Any person or persons viewing this film without gamma level security clearance are subject to immediate termination of employment and benefits without warning from the Dyer Corporation. Your discretion is advised. Don't worry, viewers. Me being the YouTuber in this video, I am giving you all gamma level clearance. If anybody from the Dire Corp contacts you or threatens your job, hit me up. I got you. I got you. I'll tell them I gave you clearance. All right, so we got some highly, highly classified level stuff going on here now. On June 3rd, 1975, the Dyer Corporation received a call from Woodlands National Park regarding the recent death of one of their production staff, John Stewart. Footage recovered from the scene revealed that the cause of death was an encounter with a Wendigo. Within 15 hours of John's death, the Dyer Corp's private military group, Task Force Delta, arrived on the scene. They were tasked with tracking down the creature and exterminating it. Okay. The team consisted of an expert tracker, two weapon specialists, and a cameraman to document the entire mission. So four people. Gotcha. Oh, we get a map. Site of John's death. Body found by park rangers. The expedition started from the site of John's death. Gotcha. 
Yes, it's got to be somewhere in that area. Oh, maybe never mind. That's a long red line. They followed the creature's trail to the riverbank where they found a shallow place to cross. I'm curious if they um if they're actually gonna remove this thing's heart right now or if they're all just gonna get killed by it. If the military gets killed by it, yeah, everybody's screwed. Just just close off the park at that point. Wall off the place forever. I wonder if the cameras get staticky from walkers too. I don't think that was the case there, but at the halfway point, the men set up a camp for the night. The mission resumed early the next morning. An off-trail campsite was discovered approximately 63 miles from the dead man's trail on the second day. Oh my god, so they traveled 63 miles? Jesus. Big ass park. Oh, there's the campsite. This poor cameraman. Rose probably doesn't even have a weapon or anything. He's just here to record. Why are they sending him in? Oh, I guess he's in the middle. everything okay blood in the tents not a good sign tent is destroyed too looks kind of recent oh blood on the trees too god damn Thank you for an analog horror where you can actually somewhat clearly see everything that's going on, by the way. Been through way too many recent analog horrors where you can just never see what's going on, really. Bloody handprints, too. It's warm. Yeah, they're close. That's for sure. Delta team held their position till nightfall. Oh no, I was just talking about how you were able to see things. Now I can't. I, th I think we're clear. Wait. Wait. God, that guy! Ah! You, stay here. You, with me. Go, go. This cameraman is not trained for this situation. Bro is so stressed. This guy was meant to be in the office, not on the field. Wait, did they just leave him alone? <laughs> Not hiding in the bloody tent, man.
Bro, there's a hole in the tent. No way, that's it. Yep, that's it. I thought that video was very cool. I liked seeing that much footage of like a whole expedition, like hunting down this Wendigo and everything and like finding like the messed up camp and everything. You see just enough and also not enough at the same time. Like, I feel like if we see too much of the Wendigo, it could definitely get a little cheesy. It definitely does seem like that none of those guys were gonna end up making it out alive though. Like I know we got to see two of them at least at the end of that video, but I doubt they made it back out of the park alive especially they were in so deep and it was at night, they're probably dead. Which also goes to show if the military can't kill a Wendigo, how is anybody else supposed to? Or in this case, it's the Dire Corp. I don't know if they're technically military, but they're definitely like military grade. Like they have like weapons and everything like that. But yeah, if they can't kill them, then who is going to? Why is this park still open? <laughs> All right, let's jump into the next one. Video five, memorial service. No oh, footage from the second video. John, we gotta go. John, we gotta go. John, we gotta go. John, we gotta go. I think it's also scary that this thing could come out during the day. Like it's not just exclusive to night. Ooh, a call. Okay, so it seems like that call kind of took place right after uh, John was killed. And basically, Steve called the Alex being like, yo, there's a Wendigo here and it's chasing me. So, and then I guess he met up with some other people and they scared it off. I tried to put captions on, but there weren't really good captions there. It was just auto-generated. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Woodlands National Park. And here are some updates for the park this upcoming week. Firstly, we would like to thank everyone who came out to our dear friend John Stewart's memorial service yesterday. It was... Um, It really was a beautiful thing, seeing all of the, uh, all the rangers, all the park goers, all the staff there. It, it, it was, it really was beautiful to, to honor our dear friend who worked here for over 20 years as our wildlife photographer. We would like to ask that you keep his wife and kids in your prayers. Aww. This upcoming time's going to be really hard for them.
Bro, if I was Steve, I would have quit already after what I saw. You okay? Yeah, I'm not. I don't want to do this right now. I'm tired. I'm depressed. I'm miserable. I'm exhausted. It's been one thing after another. I just don't want to do this right now. I just want a break. I want a break too, man, but we got to get this video out. You got the memo just as well as I did. The death quote is already too high. We're not even... We're not even halfway through the year yet. If they found out our wildlife photographer got killed by one of these things, oh my gosh, they'd have a field day with us. They'd shut the park down is what would happen. Good. Yeah, what do you need? We gotta go. We gotta go. Shut the camera off. Shut the camera off. Oh, so they didn't tell the public how John died. Ma'am, for the last time, I strongly urge you to sign the agreement and take the money. Why? What is it that I'm not supposed to talk about? For God's sakes, my husband worked as a cameraman for a national park. It sounds like you're trying to hide something. Mrs. Stewart, this is standard protocol when something like this happens. None of you care what actually happened to John. Stop pretending like you care. <sighs> You know, he told me what happens here. What really happens here. I know he didn't die from a bear attack. He was a wildlife cameraman for over 20 years. He was way too experienced for that. I think one of those things, one of those monsters got him. I don't know what you're talking about. He told me about how the park lies to the public by downplaying how dangerous the monsters really are. He told me about how the park covers up how many people actually die as a way to keep this whole operation afloat. I strongly recommend that you stop talking. For your own good. Nancy, stop talking right now. And you, get the hell out! I was just... I don't care. I said get the hell out right now. And don't say a word of this to anyone or have you working as a public defender the rest of your measly career. Steve, what is going on? Please tell me what's going on. Nancy, you need to sign this NDA right now. What? Steve, please tell me what happened to John. Please, Nancy, you can't be talking about this right now. I don't know who's listening. Who? Who is listening? Shh. Reed, don't speak. Oh. Oh, God, really? Oh, he wrote down what happened and was showing it to her, I guess. They... They wouldn't. John worked for them for so long. Why me? Nancy, listen to me. You haven't said too much yet. If you sign the agreement now, you can walk away from this. I'm sorry what happened to John, but that's over and done with now. These people... I've seen what they'll do. The people who know too much. You need to do this, Nancy. Do it for the kids. They already lost their dad. They're gonna need their mom now. Okay. I'll sign it. Now the lawyer's gonna write you a check. Take the money and go to the bank immediately. And cash it out. Get the kids and get as far away from here as you possibly can. And don't you ever say a word about what he told you or what happened here today. Do you understand me? I... Yes. I understand. If you need anything, Nancy, you call me. All right. So it seems like when John died, they kind of just told the public that he was killed by a bear in the park. But what his wife actually finds out is the truth, it seems. It seems like Steve like wrote down what was really going on on a piece of paper and was showing it to her so that she wouldn't say it out loud or nobody would say it out loud because clearly someone was recording that entire interaction just now. And we also definitely got confirmation that this goes way deeper than we thought. There is some kind of higher power in control here because he's saying like, listen, take the money there. It's basically hush money. Like, don't talk about what happened. Take the money, move away. Just go far away and never speak about this ever again for your own safety. Whoever's in control has a lot of power and can definitely, I guess, make people disappear if they were to start talking. So there's definitely more than just like windigos and walkers and these creatures going on. There's something overseeing it all. Maybe these things may possibly even be experiments or something. I don't know. That's just me throwing that out there. Who knows? But I guess we'll find out more as we go on. Video six. 
what happened to the miners in the 1850s. I'm Park Ranger Steve with Woodlands National Park. Hi, Steve. And today I'm going to be talking about a creature that can only be found here at Woodlands National Park. Oh, hi, guys. Alex. I'm out here panning for gold, just like the miners in the 1850s used to do in this natural river. What they would actually do is take shelter in these natural forming caves, but little did they know that there were hellish creatures awaiting deep inside those caverns. <laughs> and these hellish creatures are called cave critters. Cave critters are tall, gray, humanoid-like creatures with six appendages that range anywhere between 10 to 12 feet. These creatures also have superhuman strength, which gives them the ability to hold on and scale rocks very fast. The creatures also tend not to leave the cave. Go, now, now, go, go, go. The best photograph we have on file taken by John Stewart in 1957. Yo, shout out John, man. How did he not die earlier? Since precautions have been taken, we have not had a fatality due to cave critters since 1962. Cave critters actually don't reproduce like normal animals. What they actually do is they have a virus that lives in their saliva, and they infect people through biting. Now, once you have the virus, we call this a 45-45-10 rule, meaning you have a 45% chance of dying from the disease, a 45% chance of turning completely into a cave critter, and a 10% chance of having absolutely no side effects. We don't fully understand how this works. Within the first two weeks, the victim may experience rabies-like symptoms. Also, within the later month, they experience more symptoms, including but not limited to changes in skin color, superhuman strength, and the urge to return to the cave at all times. So they're kind of like zombies in a way. Oh, Dire Corp, hello. All right, so Dire Corp definitely seems to be like this higher power above everything. Gamma level clearance again. Are we gonna get to say, see a cave critter right now? Okay, I think that was someone maybe in the process of turning into a cave critter and they kind of just put him down right away. Pro park brochure information again. Cave critters. First discovered by miners during the gold rush. Cave critters are pale humanoid-like creatures with six appendages. They have long fingers and claws that enable them to climb and scale rocks effortlessly. If bitten by a cave critter, you have a 45% chance of dying, 45% chance of turning into a cave critter, and a 10% chance of surviving without any side effects. That 10% chance is very interesting. I wonder if there is a particular reason behind this, or if it's just how it works. We're not sure of their origin. Attempts to research them has proven fatal. Makes sense. The reason for this powerful urge to be drawn back to the cave is due to intense pheromones given off at a larger group of cave critters. Once the victim has reached the cave, it will be ushered in and protected by the larger group of cave critters until the full transformation that takes around six months will be fully completed. Damn, that's a long transformation so process. What should you do to stay safe against these cave critters? Now, luckily, you don't have to worry about that because here at Woodlands National Park, safety is our number one priority. That's why we took the liberty of using caution tape to block off the cave. Now, under the very rare circumstance that you encounter someone with rabies-like symptoms approaching the cave, under no circumstances should you try and stop them, as they will cause bodily harm to get to the cave. Now, what you should do is get to your local visitor center or contact a park ranger immediately. Thank you everybody for watching. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask a park ranger or pick up a brochure at the visitor center. We hope you enjoy your visit and that you have a great time at Woodlands National Park. Steve and Alex gotta get paid like $100 an hour or some craziness. I don't even know if that's enough. But they got to be getting paid really well to just be so casual about this. Like, they're terrified of what's going on, but they also just continue to work there and act like it's normal. But who is watching these videos? Who is watching these videos and they're like, Oh, well, I'm happy that I'm educated on the cave critters. Now I know to avoid the cave at the national park. I am not going to this park. The second I hear about a cave critter, a windigo, a walker, any of them, I'm not going. There is no shot. But all right, let's jump into the next one. Video 7. 
the cave critter disease outbreak of 1975. Dire Corp again. Gamma level clearance again. Don't worry, guys. You guys got the gamma level clearance from me. October 7th of 1975, Todd Harrison's curiosity had him venture too close to the cave where he was bitten by a cave critter. He hurriedly left, covering his wounds, avoiding any suspicion but from the rangers. Todd was unaware of how serious his injury was as he felt fine on his way back to New York. The following week, he started feeling bad and went to a local dire medical facility. After hearing he visited the park, the symptoms he had were more than alarming. His blood was drawn and sent to the labs for testing. It was discovered that he was in stage one of the cave critter disease. Head park ranger Steve was notified. So, okay, so this guy got cave critter disease and then left. Nice. Hello, this is James with Dire Tech Medical. My security clearance code is Alpha 586925. What I'm about to tell you is confidential information. Please hold while I confirm your security code. All right, what can I do for you? I need to confirm some information. Could you verify a couple of things for me? Yeah, I'll do my best. I need you to tell me if a gentleman by the name of Todd Harrison was in your park last week. Give me one second and let me check it. Okay, that can't be good, because now if he starts getting a little crazy and biting other people, it'll probably spread. The day that James reached out to Steve, five days had passed since the blood work had been sent off and confirmed with Diatech Labs. A team was sent out the same day to Todd Harrison's home. On arrival, the team concluded that Todd had been living out of the closet in the basement. Oh, I guess... They found towels over all the windows blocking any light from coming through as he grew more sensitive to light as his condition worsened. Yeah, he's trying to turn his house into like a cave-like scenario. A cameraman was then sent in to record the findings. So that's the closet he was living in, I guess. Oh, what is that in the sink? The blood on the sink is believed to be one of the side effects from the disease. As seen from previous subjects, symptoms could be bleeding that occurs from the eyes and nose. These symptoms were documented from a subject in 1961. Was that the 1961 case or was that Todd Harrison? 
Oh, well, he's dead now. Yeah, the blood from the eyes and the nose. The team continued to search the surrounding area, but came up empty-handed. Approximately six months later, two security guards heard strange noises coming from an abandoned hospital on the hill. One went to investigate and was attacked. The second guard claimed to have seen his friend get taken by a tall, gray, six-limbed creature. Diacorp caught wind of these events and immediately sent a team. Oh, okay. Ten men arrived, heavily armed, including a cameraman for documentation. Shout out to Diacorp for always documenting stuff. Out of the ten men, only three survived during the takedown. Two of which bitten. Wait, two of which bitten and what? Two of which bitten and infected. So only one person survived normally. The cameraman was killed and his footage destroyed, except for a few still frames the team was able to salvage. Okay, I almost can't even tell what's going on here. Another not good frame. Oh, you could. Oh, okay. You could see it. You could see its outline here. The two infected survivors were taken into containment to be studied. The cave critter body was removed and the cover up process began. All right. Okay, so when they showed up to Todd's house, he actually wasn't there. He had, a, at that point, left and gone to the abandoned hospital, I guess, where he fully transformed into a cave critter. I guess he couldn't go back to the actual cave because he was now in New York, which was far from wherever the original state that the park is in. So he kind of created his own cave in an abandoned building, and abandoned buildings are usually very moist, very dark, and stuff like that. So it makes sense for that to be like a cave-like location. In comparison but at least they did get to take down the cave critter and i mean they have two infected people but who knows what they did with them maybe they still have them i'm sure they probably do and they're probably doing tests on them and whatnot but yeah it seems like dire corp tries to cover up anything that comes out of this park like that video eight the 45 foot tall walker Woodlands National Park. Hi everybody, welcome to Woodlands National Park. I'm Park Ranger Steve, and today Hi, Steve. we're talking about the importance of only staying at designated campsites. Okay. This is very... Oh. Give this a second. Oh, we're recording a video. Uh, yeah, Alex, what's up? I'm down at Ranger Station 4. I got a camper who just came up here covered in blood, and he said he and his three friends were attacked by what sounds like a walker. Uh, this happened last night, but he just made it up here. He's covered in blood. You need to get down here ASAP. Okay. All right, we gotta go. We gotta go. Is this general vicinity? Right, yes. I don't think it's much farther. From Just where? Not. From where this camper says he. But you can't see the walker, right? So. Hey, uh, Alex, you hear that? Hear what? Wait. Yeah. Is that? That's music. Sounds like from here, over here. Yeah. Maybe somebody left a radio on or something? One of the people at the campsite that was attacked? I see it. Yep, I got it. Well, uh, looks like it's it. Here's where your music coming from. Attention all rangers, we found the campsite. About a mile off trail this way. Okay, well, there's two people. Where, where did the tech go? You're not gonna believe this. Guy gets to the ranger station. I mean, it's it, he's in bad, bad shape. Says the walker picked him up while he was in the tent and lobs him across the forest. He says he lands in a tree about 30 feet up. Falls and I guess that's how he snapped his leg. Oh, so that's why it took him till daytime to get there, cause his leg was broken. Oh my. Rangers, we have 
human remains at my location. <sighs> Send disposal units. Do a final sweep of the trail as well. We don't need anybody stumbling across any more remains that might be close. All right, let's raid this up and find any other remains that might be around here. Oh my God, Alex. Jesus Christ, it ripped him to shreds. Nothing but pieces left. Oh my God. They better get here quick. They need to clean this up. This is bad. Steve? Yeah. I found the tent. Holy shit. It was a lion. Okay. That's gotta be at least 30 feet. Yeah, so it's a really tall walker. So we might actually get footage right now. So the campsite is about a mile over there, but honestly, I don't feel like going. It's going to be crowded. It's going to be loud. I think we should just go off the trail and find a space for ourselves. That's not a half bad idea. I don't know. The rangers were pretty clear that we're not supposed to camp anywhere except the designated spots. Come on, man. I, I brought the radio. Yeah, man, we can listen to some tunes. Besides, it's like a mile away. We can get help. <sighs> Fine. I, I don't really feel like hiking another mile anyway. Come on, let's go. That's not half bad. All right, I'll start setting it up. Sounds fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. That's already all static. I think we're in the middle of the woods. The static, the static. I guess they didn't watch the Walker video. Actually, I think this does confirm like these walker videos and stuff aren't available to all the public because wouldn't they probably know about the walkers and the static and everything if those videos were available to the public? Just saying. An old radio book. When'd you buy that piece of crap? Did you break it? Yeah, what the heck is wrong with it? That's really loud. What was that? We don't have earthquakes in Washington. Is that a bear? I mean, whatever it is, it's massive. Yeah, it just sounds huge. Are you crazy? I'm gonna go check it out. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, the person that always says, let's go check it out, dies first. We, we, we gotta go, man. Why is Dallas doing that? I don't, I don't know. Hey, what do you see? I'm coming! Dallas! 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 Oh, I know you're not running towards it. Okay. No, 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 no! Mark! Mark, we gotta go! I, I got a gun. We, we we have to find the right. A gun. All right, got it. I don't know if that's gonna help you, bro. Do you see anything? Huh? I don't see anything. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not seeing it at night. And the guy with the gun is gone. No. No, 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 no. Ah! 
Oh, it's a flare gun? Kind of looked like a flare gun there. Oh, it is. I don't think that tent's saving you, buddy. alive oh this must be the guy that survived so he's in the tree at this point no Okay, so my thoughts overall on Woodlands National Park. I honestly thought all the videos were good. I think it's a lot harder to make actual footage recorded analog horror. I think it's very easy for it to get cheesy or corny. And there may have been a few points where I thought like the acting was a little eh. But again, like I said, I can't really judge who's via to act. It would be horrible. But I think they do a really good job of like balancing the classic analog horror aspect with like images and text while also showing actual footage of events going down. And in that footage, they show you just enough that it doesn't fully take you out. I like that we don't get to fully see the Wendigo because I think it would be really corny if we did. <laughs> I feel like whenever a horror movie or anything actually shows the monster fully, it completely takes away the horror aspect of it. I think what makes these things really scary is that we don't know what they look like completely and we kind of make it up in our imagination to be so much scarier than what it could actually be sometimes. Story-wise, I do think that there is something way bigger going on here. Whether it's Dire Corp experimenting on things and accidentally creating these monsters, or if they just have bigger plans with these monsters overall and that's why they don't want the news getting out to the public. It almost feels like that they're on purpose feeding these monsters, like yes, they're letting the public know about them. But someone made a good point that during the Windigo video, Steve clearly says not to run when you see the Windigo, but runs anyway. And the point that they're making in the comments is that Steve probably knows best what to do and he knows what's best to do is run. But for some videos that you're showing the public, if you were to just be like, oh, well, if you see a Wendigo, you're dead, people are probably less likely to come to the park. So by saying like, oh, just back away slowly and then, you know, then run away, it kind of gives people a little more of a safer idea of what's going to happen if they see a Wendigo, even though most likely it's going to be an instant death. I think the only reason that Steve survived the Wendigo attack is literally just because it killed John and was feasting on his body first before going for Steve. But I really did like this analog horror and I would like to continue covering it in the future. If you'd like to see me cover more of it, don't forget to drop a like on this video. But seriously, big shout out to the channel Buddy Films that did all of these videos that you saw today. Please go subscribe to them and check out their channel in the link down below. They do have other videos on their channel as well. Always make sure to go support your analog horror content creators. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any theories or thoughts on this series overall. And also, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We do videos like this all the time. And we're trying to hit 300 100k before the end of the year all right guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one hope you have a great rest of your day peace